You guys, we're going to get started. Um, Aggie's given me the first few minutes because as we've gone around and done this in person, we've had so much fun um, seeing volunteers face to face for the first time in five months. And, and we were all socially distanced with masks and we knew that not everybody was comfortable with that. So of course we're recording this one for all those people that can't be here at four o'clock today, but can look at the recording online. So I actually have a few things that I kind of wanted to just touch base with. Um, if you have questions you want to ask me, for those of you who are online, go ahead and unmute yourself, or if, I'll monitor the chat too. If you want to put a question in chat, we can do that. So five months of the pandemic, and we're coming into hopefully school starting um, very successfully here soon, or already in some cases. Um, one of the things that we did effective June 1st was what we call the Share the Love Initiative. So I hope you're all familiar with that. I hope you all saw it um, and have taken advantage of it. I wanted to give you some of the background on this. As we were into the pandemic, we knew that um, recruiting girls was going to be very, very difficult at best because we didn't know whether we were going to have access to schools and we just didn't know what it was going to look like. So we knew that we really needed to love the girls that we had in troops now. Um, that's about 3,860 Girl Scouts in troops last March. So we also knew that there were a lot of families that were gonna be having economic hardships during the pandemic. So I put together some numbers. We had a really strong cookie season last year. I think y'all know, um, you're probably still a little exhausted from it. And took some numbers to our finance committee and said, I'd really like to just um, cover the memberships for our Girl Scouts to make sure there's no barriers to them coming back and taking part in Girl Scouts because they these girls need us now more than ever. And so we felt like sharing the love is a good way to do that because so what we scheduled what we came up with is that a true a returning troop would cover the cost for membership for the first five girls in the troop and the council would cover the cost for Girl Scout membership for the rest of the girls in the troop, whether that was one more girl or 40 more girls, it didn't matter. Um, we just wanted the troop to be sure they were coming back and we would help them. And we didn't want to have people to ask for financial aid because sometimes that's a barrier. So we're really, the immediately, the immediate response from our finance committee was yes, this is the right thing to do. Let's, let's offer this initiative. And, and I think that's been very well received. We've had a lot of people um, take, take advantage of it. It will go through September 30th, but uh, because we want you to renew before the year starts. At the same time, we've kept our Lead on Us initiative going as well. Lead on Us, we started last year, and that's where we just felt so strongly about how much a leader gives of her personal time and sacrifices so much of herself to lead our girls that she shouldn't also have to pay for a membership and a background check on top of that. And we, we started that initiative last year and we committed to always making that available. So Lead on Us is still active this year. Um, we know that a lot of you, we, we have started allowing in-person troop meetings in June as the state of South Carolina has opened up. And I would say probably about 10% of troops as I've gone around have actually done that. Not a lot are comfortable with it. Those that have done it are usually meeting in a park outside somewhere. Um, some have had a, um, I have someone telling me they can't hear. Can y'all give me a thumbs up or down? Can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, so, so not a lot of troops have been meeting in person. A lot of you kind of take a break over the summer anyway, but some have been doing it and they've been successful. We've actually had two big twilight camps, one in Myrtle Beach that I attended and one in Somerville that were very well done. And my philosophy on allowing in-person troop meetings 
was, was basically this. There's a lot of guidelines out there from the CDC, from Accelerate South Carolina, and um, from DHEC, and Girl Scout volunteers are absolutely the best at following guidelines and keeping our girls safe. So I just felt very strongly that we needed to trust our volunteers to keep our girls safe. You guys are the best at following guidelines. You know what to do. And, and you've been doing it very, very well so far. Um, we did shift to virtual programming very, very fast. As soon as we shut down our offices and went to remote on March 16th, Within a week, we had started converting all of our programs to virtual. We did the partnership with Mountains to Midlands Council. And then we started doing the journey badge work um, and did all of those programmings through the end of July. I will tell you that by the end of July, we had reached almost 40,000 girls. Almost 40,000 girls participated in our online programming, which is just amazing. But even more amazing is that 80% of those girls were, were from outside of the state of South Carolina. So we went national with this, which was, was very cool. And we will continue to do a mix of virtual programming um, and hopefully soon some more in-person in programming as we get school started and figure out what the landscape looks like. GSUSA also knows that virtual is going to be with us for a while. So they, the top bullet here says Zoom. Um, that's the platform we're using now. We're probably all like exhausted with Zoom. We've used it so much or other different formats. But GSUSA partnered with Zoom and got national uh, pricing. So we will be hopefully this week releasing some details and allowing troops to purchase a Zoom account through the council for $36 for the year, which is a really good price. And I saw some information on it the other day. It allows 100 participants. So it's not like a free version of Zoom that limits you to people and limits you to time. This is a full Zoom account for 100 participants for $36 for the year. Our council becomes the administrator for that. Many of y'all know Michaela Watts. In fact, I think all of you know Michaela Watts. Yeah. She'll be the person that will be um, getting the accounts and, and getting them to you. So look for information out that. I think that we're gonna be having it, I think we'll be releasing it this week. Can I ask you a question on that? Yes. Um, do you guys know how to do the breakout meetings within Zoom for like our multi-age groups? I have done it, Kathy. I've never, I mean, I've, I've been a recipient of it. I've never actually done it, but my staff has. So, and this account will allow that as well. So that's a great question. Um, $36 is it's $3 per month. It's a really good price and it has the full functionality. And there's, uh, they're also going to be putting out training resources on it. One of the things that Aggie and Ashley Bearfield and um, Danielle Sykes, our program staff, have been talking about doing is creating a whole nother webinar on how to do virtual activities with your girls because they did you know, they, they served 40,000 girls this summer. They learned a lot about what works and doesn't. So they're going to be doing a webinar uh, training through Zoom uh, recorded on best practices for how to engage your girls through Zoom. Okay. And breakout sessions are really effective. They're very effective. Thank you. Are you burned out with Zoom yet, too? Sounds like you've done a lot of them. You've done I, them. I'm a teacher, so I use it oh, quite okay. frequently. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I haven't been taught that process, and I'll need it this year with the okay. church. Yeah, yeah they work. They work really well. Someone, like I said, I've been on the, I've been put in a breakout room several times. It's very cool. All right, so the next thing on my list to talk about is staggered trainings. One of the things that Aggie and I feel very, very strongly about is in-person face-to-face -face trainings. Even if it's by Zoom, it's so important for, for our volunteers to get to know us and the staff and for us to get to know you. So we said we're going to do in-person trainings. We're going to offer that. We did uh, six days um, of, of trainings. And where we typically would go to a city, say maybe go to Florence and we would do one time, we couldn't, we knew for social distancing, we had to offer more schedules. So we offered the four different timeframes 
and we just basically hit the city for the day. And I really like that. That turned out to be a great benefit because some people can come at lunch and some people can come after work. And this gives more flexibility for our volunteers to be able to interact with us. So we will continue to do staggered trainings and you'll see that for our cookie trainings when we start those in November, which is like practically, practically here. Um, so I really, really do like that format. One of the things we learned that we off, our latest session that we offered was four o'clock and we're going to offer an, a later session for people for after work because we found out that four o'clock wasn't late enough. So, um, so we're gonna do that. The, we've also started in April service unit monthly check-ins. Um, back at the end of March, beginning of April, I really was like, I wanna hear from our service unit chairs, our service unit coordinators, how is it going? What can we do to support them? So we did uh, for our first Zoom with the service unit chairs, not for the council to report out, just to hear from everybody and go, how are, you, how are your girls doing? How are your leaders doing? How are you reaching out to them? What support do you need? What can we do together? And it's become a monthly check-in where we just have a conversation and we work through issues together and we share ideas and we brainstorm and a lot of good things have come out from that. And it, like I said, it's not a report out. Um, basically who attends that from staff is myself and Aggie and Michaela and Tina, just the, our leadership because it's, it's just become a great session for throwing out ideas and, and what do you think? And, and hearing from those of you who, who know best what's gonna work. So we're gonna continue to do that. We do that at the last week of every month. We have our next one this Thursday. And the service unit chairs wanted to do it the last week of every month because they do their service unit meetings usually the first week of every month. And this allows them to kind of continue those conversations and maybe provide some more feedback, which has been really, really very positive. Um, and we'll continue doing that, I think, as an ongoing kind of a thing. It's just a, another great opportunity to hear from our volunteers. You know, what, what do you need? And, and what, what issues are you having? And what can we do better? And the last thing on the list is to talk a little bit about our, our cookie program, because we have a couple of things happening with that. And I wanted to give you a preview, Aggie and I did. Um, we in 2021 are still under contract with Little Brownie Bakers. It is our last year of our three-year contract. So I have already received a contract proposal from ABC Bakers as well as Little Brownie Bakers to continue into 2022 and beyond. So what I've been doing is I've been going around and asking volunteers, what do you think? Do you like ABC? Do you like Little Brownie better? Why? Or do you not care? I just wanted to get some feedback. I have, there have been no decisions made, <laughs> so nobody panic. I just want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you have a baker that you prefer? So um, if anybody wants to come off mute, I think Kyle's oh, ready to jump in. <laughs> I will say we much prefer ABC Bakers because Little Brownie doesn't have lemonades. It, it doesn't have, um, we've had a lot more crushed boxes, empty boxes, weird packaging with brown, little brownie bakers that I didn't see as much when we were on ABC. But okay. the cookies that are available through ABC are better than the cookies available through little brownie baker. Um, I hear you know, that a lot, Kyle. Overall, I hear that a lot. <laughs> and then the other thing is just the crushed and the packages like empty boxes in a case or you know, um, open boxes, open sleeves. It just, it's not, it's not the best. Um, you know, as far as sort of the websites, I sort of think they're comparable. I, I don't, that's, that's really a big issue. But I know that like we actually order cookies from a troop that has ABC Baker, yeah. that uses ABC so we can get lemonades for our troop because we have so many customers who want those and we can't get them. So, yes. 
that's my I, I I've heard that many many times <laughs> anybody else have any thoughts they want to share would it change the time frame we sell cookies no that's totally up to us Kathy that's a great question um, I'll give you some of my perspective on this. Aggie and I both have a long history working with both bakers. Um, so we're very, very familiar. I will tell you that I think, I'm thinking at the business perspective and then I'll talk about the cookies. Customer service from both of them has been good. I mean, basically Aggie and I demanded good customer service and, and they've been very good with us. Um, ABC does have a little bit of an advantage from a business perspective. And I'll tell you why. Um, their largest, their distribution center for the East Coast, for the entire East Coast, is in Greenville, South Carolina. So if I, what happens now, when I need to get cookies from Little Brownie, it takes me four to five days when I place the order before I get those cookies. So that says, Aggie and I look at inventory every single day and go, what do we think the troops are going to order for the weekends? And we have to do a five-day lead time to make sure we have cookies. And ABC, having their largest distribution center in Greenville, says, I can get cookies in three hours, well, six, round trip, right. anytime I want. This is huge from, from mm -hmm. for our perspective. I don't know if y'all remember, two years ago, we went to Tennessee to get them because Little mm -hmm. Brownie couldn't get them for us. And you know that was the nightmare on the road, but we made, <laughs> they made it back. So that's really big for us. Um, ABC really, They've worked with Aggie and I in Texas and New Mexico. They will give us a better price, but Little Brownie also wants to keep us, so price may be the same. The s'mores for, for ABC are the out, chocolate on the outside instead of the sandwich cookie. The s'more is the same price as a Thin Mint or a, um, you know, any of the cookies, so it's not a premium cookie with ABC. It would be a $4 box cookie, which is kind of nice. The only premium cookie for ABC would be the gluten-free. Um, the thanks a lot for ABC is going away this year. I think you probably have all seen the national press on the new Toastier, um, which is really good. They actually send us a case. So, um, but we wouldn't have that cookie this year. So if you love the thanks a lot, that's not going to be around anymore. It's the Toastier. Um, so what, what happens if you're an AB, if you're a little brownie council, just like you said, Kyle, people want those lemonades. The number one question you get is, where can I get the lemonades? But if you're a little brown, if you're an ABC council, because we've been that, the number one question you get is, I want the Samoas. I don't know what those caramel delights are. I want a Samoa. So, you know, you kind of get the complaint either way on, on cookies, but I do love the lemonade. Um, I think that's about, that's also, kind of the uh, other. Monique shared, wanted me to share with the group. Uh, Monique shared, wanted me to share with the group that she prefers ABC and Deborah Huggins. And Monique said the s'mores are much better from ABC. I agree. <laughs> they are prettier with little brownie, but they, I do prefer the, the ABC s'mores as well. Okay, so um, I appreciate your feedback. I will tell you, that as we've gone around the council, you guys are really kind of at, at best neutral. I think most people have preferred ABC um, for the cookie mix. Oh, I, I knew there was one other business reason I liked ABC. ABC is owned by um, a company called Weston Foods out of Canada, and they are 30% of the parents' business. Right, so Weston, 30% of Weston Foods revenue comes from ABC cookies through Girl Scouts. Little Brownie used to be owned by Kellogg, now they're owned by Ferrera, which is the um, candy company, and they are 1% of their parent company. So what that means, and it has happened, if they miscalculate how many cookies to produce in the fall, they won't fire up their factories and, and make more cookies. So several years ago, Little Brownie missed the Thin Mint number and many councils got just their initial order of Thin Mints and got no more. But ABC, because it's such a bigger piece of their parent, 
will refire up factories and continue to make cookies because it's too big a piece of their bigger pie. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So that was one of the things I always liked about ABC too. I knew that they were more invested in the Girl Scout cookie program from their parents. Okay, so a couple of cool things to talk about with cookies. You see the number, the word clover down there. Does anybody know what clover is? Okay, so what we're doing and we budgeted, and I've already taken it to the finance committee and the board of directors will approve it for our next year's budget. We are going to make clover available to all troops. It's like Square, it's a merchant processing system for credit cards. Except Clover, you don't need any equipment on your smartphone. What you do is you um, scan, you take a smartphone and you scan the credit card with, the, with your camera app and it automatically processes the credit card. Now what will happen is you'll have the Girl Scout account for Clover <laughs> and the money, when you make the transaction, the money will go to your troop account, but the council will pay the merchant processing fees and the per transaction fee, right? So we're doing this for really two reasons. We know that cashless transactions are more and more and more frequent. People don't carry checks. They generally don't have cash. And we also, in a pandemic, don't necessarily want girls to be handling that. We don't know what it's gonna look like next year. And we want every troop to have the same access consistently. So we've partnered with Clover to do this. And you'll get more details on how it works as we go through cookie training. But the key here is that every troop will have the ability to use it. It does not require any equipment other than a smartphone. And the council is going to pay the merchant processing fees and transaction fees. So I think this is going to be a really really nice benefit. Some of you have avoided transaction fees by typing into digital cookie and it's cumbersome and it's hard to keep up at a booth because it's so slow. You won't have to deal with that anymore. So we're really excited about that. We are going to start cookies a week later in January than we did this year because this year we started on the first Saturday after school came back. It was like January 4th or 5th, it was real quick. And we heard that that was too fast. So we're going to start one week later and we're still gonna have the first week of just order taking before booths start. Does that make sense? You guys remember how we started cookies but booths didn't start for a week later. But the difference this year is that we're going to open up digital cookie in December. So I'm letting, every, letting that sink in with everybody. What that means, and you're like, oh my God, you don't have to do it. But what this means is if a girl wants to get started selling cookies and taking orders, she can do it through digital cookie in December. That means her friends and family can order Thin Mints for Christmas gifts if they want and pay shipping. Now, if they choose girl delivery, they won't get their cookies till January 11th or whatever that January Saturday 11th. is in January. But they can start taking orders for girl delivery in December. Um, so that's kind of a little preview of cookies. <laughs> oh, one other thing. Mountains to Midlands, our sister council, is an ABC council. And they're going to a $5 box next year. Ooh. Yeah, I see a few mouths drop on that too. We're not. <laughs> We're staying at $4 and $5.50. And right now, and I would never go, I would never increase the price of cookies unless we had a lot of time to talk about it. So my thoughts right now, as Aggie and I discussed this, we're thinking not in 2022, but probably 2023, we will go to a different cookie price. And we're not going to do anything in 50 cent increments. It's going to be dollar increments. So that's kind of what we're thinking about that. Any questions for me right now? And then I've already, ta I ta I've taken my first half hour. Yes, half hour is good. <laughs> Aggie is the, the, oh, one other thing. We are, oh, yeah. postcards. We, um, because we know that a lot of girls are not connected virtually, and we're finding that out through the school system as well, 
we really felt like we wanted to, again, love our Girl Scouts. So we are, we just, in fact, they're here. We have to get them in the mail. We designed a postcard, an actual postcard that we're going to physically mail to every single one of our Girl Scouts that basically says, we love you, we miss you, uh, we care about you, uh, we'd love to have you back. Just a touch point to make sure our girls are hearing from us. Um, and I really love this idea so much that we'll probably do it again as we're, you know, towards the end of the year, just to make sure that those girls that we haven't been able to reach, we can reach at least by, by snail mail. So, and for those of you who, well, I mentioned a little bit more about recruiting and we know we can't recruit in schools. What I just released today is we are working with GSUSA and we're sending out 26,000 postcards to families in South Carolina in our council that do not have Girl Scouts but have girls of the age of Girl Scouts as a recruitment tool. So almost 27,000 postcards will be going out in the next couple of weeks to families to invite them to join Girl Scouts because we know we can't reach them in schools. So um, 26,000 postcards, <laughs> that's a lot, 27. 27. <laughs> This is what the pandemic does. It takes us back to snail mail in the post office. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have. Um, thanks for indulging me for 30 minutes and I'll be around this whole time. Uh, if you think of a question, I'm gonna turn it over obviously to Aggie, but I'll be here and I'm happy to continue any kind of conversation about anything you wanna talk about. All right. All right. Well, she, Diane is literally right across from me. So if you want to just talk to her, you can go ahead and put it on the chat and ask her a question. And if, even if you have questions about the slides I'm about to show you, Diane has gone to every single training with me. She could practically do this training on her own. So she can also answer any questions you may have. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're not going to do the promise and the law, but tonight before you all go to sleep, make sure you say I'm okay. <laughs> all right so i want to thank you all so much we are so sorry that we missed you at our face-to-face -face trainings as diane mentioned uh, we will be having a uh, cookie training in person uh, those dates will be we'll probably post those by the end of this week or early next week um, as we start we have the dates, we just need to confirm the locations, okay? And like I said, we will be starting up, starting them in the morning and going up a little bit later for those of you who work and can join us at a later time. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being on this webinar um, and for all that you do. So why do we do fall product? Why do we do cookies? We do it for the girls, obviously. I, I don't know if you can by show or a thumbs up, who sold fall product last year? Yes, okay. Kathy, no, Kyle, no, Kara, yes, Brenda, we I know you sold. Yet. Joanne, did you sell? Yes, okay, Misty, yes, cool. Well, we are, it was simple, right? Very, very simple. We went to a new system called M2. Um, just so you all know, I think Diane mentioned it at last year's trainings. She actually broke the contract with QSP. Uh, because we just believed in M2 so much. We love M2, the simplicity. The girls love it. They love the interactiveness of the, the program that um, we just knew it was a no-brainer to go to M2. And just so you all know, QSP no longer is a, a vendor with GSUSA. In fact, if a council is selling fall product and magazines. The only magazine vendor left is M2, which is the one we're using. So um, yeah, yeah. All right. So you all obviously know because you keep coming back uh, that you are directly impacting the future of our girls by facilitating the largest girl-led entrepreneurial program in the world. And of course, the girls don't even know that they're doing these things like these five skills, right? Um, goal setting, business ethic, money management, they don't know that. They just think that this is a fundraiser, but 
in the process of doing this, they are learning so much. I and mean, you all see it. You all see that little Daisy at her first cookie booth, so shy, not wanting to talk to anybody. And then by the end of the sale, Kathy, you're laughing because I'm sure you've witnessed it every year, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the end of the sale, you can't shut her up because she's like, she just needs to reach every single person because she's just become so confident and, and believes in what she's doing. And, and it's all through, believe it or not, the, the, a box of cookies. And all she knows is that, you know, she's selling cookies, she's having a good time with her friends, and she's getting some cool uh, rewards. So I'm going to tell you about some forms that you all will be receiving. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you're going to receive it mm -hmm. in a, after I talk about all the forms. So first, you're going to see this troop envelope. It is a two-sided uh, envelope. On the front is the one on the left-hand side. You'll see the two patches right on top. And in the middle, that is the cookie crossover uh, patch. Right there, it says Deborah Paisley. I want you all to remember her. I know you all know Deborah. She's been here for a while, and she is just amazing. Um, the reason I have her information is because she is my assistant for fall product and for cookies. And if you all have any questions, please feel free to contact her. I know you all love to email me and contact me, and that's okay. That is okay. But I swear to you that Deborah knows everything that I know about fall product and cookies. And because I do get way more emails than she does, she will be um, more likely to answer you quick, uh, quick. Oh my God, faster than I can. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think. Um, also, on the uh, front page, you'll see more information on Ashton Farms, who is our nut vendor, and M2. On the back side, you will see a checklist of items uh, to not forget. And then at the bottom, if your troop does accept checks from customers, those are our um, guidelines because I know that a lot of you don't, you don't have to, that is all up to you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, on the front page, you'll see it says online resources. Those are all the online resources you can use. And then your important dates, your important dates are also on there. You're also gonna receive one of these per girl. And this is the M2 flyer. For those of you who sold last year, I mean, it was that simple, right? You handed it to your girls, there's three steps. They visit the website, they create their, their, um, their avatar and they send emails. That is where they're going to do their entire campaign. But you see right there in the middle, I don't know if you can see my cursor where it says my troop number. Make sure that you fill that out before you give it to the girls because believe it or not, some girls do not know their troop numbers, or sometimes it's the parents setting up the campaign for their daughters, and the parents may be the ones that don't know the troop numbers. So before you hand these out, make sure you put that troop number on there, okay? You will also get some money envelopes. You are also going to get the Troop Ball Product Manager form, and this is already on our website. Actually, all of these forms are on our website, and uh, there is a fillable version or one that you can just print, sign, and then send it and scan, email, however you choose. They are on our website as well. In fact, the, this PowerPoint that I'm showing you is already on our website as well. Um, that doesn't count as your training. This is your training. The reason I put the PowerPoint in there is because just in case you all want to go back and train your parents or you're like, hey, I remember seeing a screen about that or I really want to, I want my girls to know a little bit more about the sloth or whatever, uh, it is there for you. So we already made it for you. You guys want to use it. It's there. It's already there. So this form is the one you, I'm going to need so that way I can give you access to the M2 site. Okay, so make sure you fill that out and return it to Deborah. Deborah again, is the one, she compiles everything, this and your ACH form, and then I get it, I put it on a spreadsheet, and then I tell M2, these are the ones, these are the troops that have access to our system. Speaking of ACHs, this is also an ACH form. We do need a new one from you every year. And the reason we need a new one every year is just so that we have your most accurate and updated bank information. And once we have one for fall product, we do not need one for cookies unless for some reason you change banks. If you don't change banks, you don't have to worry about cookies, but we do need one every year for fall product and that will cover you for the whole year. Also on this for uh, on your envelope, there's money handling procedures. Make sure you read that. This is how uh, we do business and that you all will as well. There is also a parent permission slip. Make sure your parents understand what they are, their requirements for them are. 
Um, right there on the left hand side, there's little boxes. It's kind of small for them to initial, but make sure you read out loud. Make sure you read out loud to them what they, the acknowledgement. Make sure they check it off. Um, this is also fillable. It's also on our website. And as you can see, kind of like at the bottom, it has three choices because we have three levels with choices. And I do promise you, because this was brought up at a training, and I can't believe I missed it. So I do apologize ahead of time, is that I did not put a slot for a t-shirt size. <laughs> so next year's, and the cookie one does, the cookie one does have a, a place for your t-shirt size, but for next year for fall product, it will have a choice of the t-shirt sizes. So you all don't have to worry about that. So when it's time to select the rewards, the girls can already uh, ahead of time select them. And then you don't have to be calling anybody and saying, oh my gosh, what does she want? You'll already have that information in front of you. And then this one is online only. And the reason this discrepancy report is online only is because you may or may not need it. Um, this is for NSF checks, uh, delinquencies, or counterfeit money. So either one, either one of these three items, as you can see on top, it says A, B, and C. It tells you what I need for each of those items. And you can't see it right now. It is covered, but I promise you that on the form, you can see exactly what you need for that discrepancy report. Oh my gosh, excuse me. I feel like I need to sneeze. So how are we going to get these forms to you? So we are doing something new this year. I don't know if you all have seen this already. Um, if you want myself <laughs> and Diane to personally deliver your um, packets, these, this is the information of what we're gonna do. We're doing drive-throughs. So Diane and I are gonna be at every single one of these locations. So this, we start <laughs> this Wednesday at Beaufort. So if you are in Beaufort and you email Deborah and say, hey, give my packet to Aggie. Um, I have 25 girls, she'll need the information. She'll have it ready for me and I will take it to you on Wednesday. Same for the North Charleston, that is this Thursday. So if you just wanna swing by and it, and I'll go over that information. It doesn't have it here, the times. Oh, what? it's four to 6.30. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be all these locations from 4 p.m. to 6.30. So if you're in Orangeburg, your date is August 31st at the Edisto Memorial Gardens. Again, four to 6.30 p.m. Just email Deborah because she will have your packet ready. I won't know. If you want her to mail it to you, then have her mail it to you. If you wanna just download those items that are these forms that they're already on our website, then you can download them. So you just need to let Deborah know, hey, I need my packet, give it to Aggie. I'll pick it up at Florence on September 1st at the office or uh, September 2nd at Myrtle Beach, okay? Also there, in case you all hadn't seen that, is if your troop early birded, we are going to have, and you qualified, you earn them. You, uh, we will have your umbrellas and the early bird patches for your girls there as well. If you do any pre-orders for the shops, so if you need a uniform, badges, patches, right now is the time, contact Shandella. Uh, pre-order the items and she'll get, we'll get them uh, to you as well. Um, if your girls earned recognition certificates for the girls ceremony, we will have them as well, and we will hand them to you that day as well. You can take your girls if you want, and of course, Diane will be there, and it's a fo great photo op, and since we jazz hands, <laughs> because we didn't get to do it in person this year. So these are the items that we will be there for. Um, so just, again, if it's for fall product packets, please email Deborah and let her know how many uh, girls you have, and she will have them ready for you, Well, and I'll take them to you. All right. So this year, our mascot is this beautiful creature, this uh, three-toed <laughs> pygmy sloths. I have been dying for them to do something with sloths, and they finally did. So I'm so, so, so excited. And every year, they also do a different theme. The theme this year is Bravely Be You and Trust Your Strength. On the, uh, the other side of that M2 form, there's also more information on sloths. So take this uh, mascot, have the girls learn more about it. And in fact, uh, one of the things we're going to do, uh, Ashley already left. Ashley's our program specialist here in, in Charleston. At one of our trainings here in, Char in North Charleston, somebody told us that there is this 
like wildlife exotic zoo on Folly Beach. And it is real because we Googled it and they have sloths there. So it is an interactive zoo. You can actually take your girls. It's $15. I don't know why I promote them. I just love sloths, I guess. Um, it's like $15 per girl and I believe it's $50 per adult. And the reason I had Jenna, uh, why did I say Jenna? Oh my gosh, Ashley, uh, reach out to them is because I wanna see if they'll partner with us and maybe give us a little break, a uh, uh, price break. So that's, uh, that's coming soon. But if not, uh, we all have cookie money. We haven't done anything. Take your girls here. I think that would be cool. You guys, uh, if you look at the website, <laughs> you can actually pet it. You feed it. There's photo ops with a sloth. And I, I'm going to be doing that next month with my daughter for her birthday. So I'll be there. <laughs> all right. So these are the recognitions this year. Um, just like before, they are cumulative. And one of the things that... I love and I think I'm probably the only council that does that is we kind of doubled it with our rewards. And what that means is that as you can see right here for online, if a girl sells 36 items, not only does she get that fuzzy slot, she gets everything before the fuzzy slot. And not only that, those 36 items also count towards the recognitions on top, which says total items sold. So if she had already sold, so let's say she sells 100 items online. Not only does she get the online stuff, she's already sold 100 items on the, the rewards on top. I hope that makes sense. And um, I know that our, our M2 vendor said, do you know you do that? And I said, of course I know I do that. That's how we do that. The girls work hard. I love to give them rewards. So, all right. So I want you all to meet Layla. Layla is that giant sloth you see right on your screen. The reason she's named Layla is because uh, that is the name of our top fall product seller. In fact, Layla is from Hartsville, Lee County, and she has been our top fall product seller for two years in a row. And I did tell her that if she is our top seller again, that I will put her picture on the order card for 2021. So, or anybody really. At this point, I don't know why we hadn't done that yet, but we will from here on put the, the picture of our top fall product seller. And then the two little other sloths right there, it's a large sloth. I mean, this picture really doesn't do them justice because that sloth is gigantic. I mean, yeah, it, they, the they are in the other room. <laughs> that sloth is so huge that it makes the other ones look small, but it's not that small. And the way the girls can earn this giant sloth, only one girl in our council will earn her. And that is for every 15 emails a girl sells, uh, sends, I'm sorry, um, she enters a raffle to win her. So for every 15, there is a, her name gets entered into a raffle and then she, only one girl in our council will uh, be the proud owner of Layla. All right, and then here are our patches. Well, while, while we're still on <laughs> sloths, here's Diane. Uh, she has our sloths in person. They look, aren't they cute? <laughs> and they're, they are a good size. Yes, we love our, our, our stuffed animals here. We get to play with stuffed animals here. <laughs> so these are our patches that the girls can earn this year. And what I love about them is that they fit together. You see those three at the bottom? Those are three separate patches. And those patches, are, there's different items that they have to do, like uh, the six, the one on the left side, they have to sell uh, six online items. The one in the middle, Bravely Be You, they have to sell 20. And the one on the right hand side, uh, they have to just send 15 emails. So after they do that, they earn these patches. And then like last year, the girls will be able to earn their personalized patch. This is what it looks like this year. The girls will be able to choose between uh, her being on a kayak with the sloth swimming right next to them. And of course it has their name on top. Or on the right hand side, you see the girl, it would be your, your girl's avatar with the uh, sloth hanging out with her. And the rec, um, they are earned the same as last year. They have to create their avatar. They have to send 15 or more emails and have a total of $275 in total for items. That doesn't mean online only, that's just total. Whether it's on the order card, <laughs> no. <laughs> Whether it's on the order card or online. Okay, and just like last year, the girls, uh, the troop does earn 15% of the total sales. Um, and that's for the magazines, online, nuts, chocolates, and uh, care to share items. 
And the way the girls participate are in two ways. In person, the girls still, there's still order cards. And then online by doing that M2 link, they with, with the, this flyer that you all will receive. And um, yeah, so online becomes more important this year because you know, there's still some people, myself included, that are still a little afraid to go out and interact. So online is gonna be very important to those people. And banking procedures, again, you must turn in that fall product description form, the ACH form. Remember that once the girls start turning money into you to uh, put it into your troop account, any NSF checks need to be submitted to me within seven days of notification. All discrepancy reports need to be emailed to me by November 8th. And the reason I need them is because if you don't tell me um, we can't make any edits to our ACH, which is November 20th. So if you do have any of these forms, that gives me enough time to let finance know that we need to make a change to your, your, your balance, I'm sorry. So aside from the 16 items that I'm gonna show you in a bit that are on your order card, Ashton Farms does sell 25 items online. And out of those 25, 21 are gluten-free. Um, have any of you purchased any other items that are online that you really, really, really love? You can chat or unmute yourself or... No? All right, well, they're all good. If you like coffee, get those mocha cups. They are really, really good. And I know Diane's favorite are those dill pickles. So she orders those online every year. <laughs> and then this is our care to share. Um, this right there, this is an actual picture of your order card on column Q that is called care to share, or it says uh, military donation. And what that means is that if a customer is approached and they, they say, you know what, I'm diabetic, I don't wanna set, uh, buy anything, but I do wanna help the girls. So what they would do is make a $6 donation that would go towards nuts uh, for the military. And so what, what happens is if a girl sells five or more of these items, then she earns that care to share patch. And as a service unit, you all decide what to do with those items. They would be the honey roasted peanuts. And a lot of service units, they let the troops decide where those donations go. Uh, but a lot of service units also, they feel really strongly about a, uh, an organization and they all donate them there. So that's up to your service unit, uh, what you do with those donations. So as I mentioned, just like there are two cookie vendors, there are two uh, nut vendors. Yeah, there's a chat, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, they they have, were founded in 1921 and have been working with Girl Scouts for over 26 years. These are their facilities. They are located in Waukesha, Wisconsin. And of course they have state-of-the-art factories and um, they just love how clean they are and they love to show us pictures every year of how clean and shiny their floors are. So there you go. So these are the items that you all will, the girls will be selling this year. It is 16 items. Um, the only thing we removed this year, believe it or not, last year we had the Thin Mint Almonds. They did not do that well. Um, so we did remove them. We were very surprised because normally when you put Thin Mints in front of something, it, I mean, it's out, it just sells like crazy. But our number one uh, side item is the Deluxe Pecan Clusters. And if you see that right there, item D, that one is the box, Deluxe Pecan Clusters. And C is the exact same item, except in it, it is in this really cute tin, the chickadee tin. So this also this year is that brownie tin. Do y'all remember last year we had that uh, vintage junior uniform tin? Uh -huh. um, Ashton Farms did say that they were gonna have a series of vintage tins. So this is this year's the brownie. How many of you wore that uniform? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what we hear at all our trainings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kyle, everybody wore that was last year's. And then this year's will be the brownie. And then, as I mentioned, the holiday tin does house the uh, deluxe pecan clusters. And one item that we did bring back this year are these dark chocolate peppermint pretzels. And the reason I even just put them on the screen by itself is because they did really, really well. And they're a good holiday item. Um, you all know that these make good um, gifts. 
gifts for your mailman, your teachers, your anybody, anybody you need a nice gift for. They these did really, really well. And they they do taste good. They do say dark chocolate. They are dark chocolate. I know me personally, I'm not a dark chocolate fan, but um, they did really, really well. Oh, and one thing I'm gonna put in our our board chair, <laughs> our board chair Cliff. Oh, he just called you. Um, <laughs> He, when he's been, he's been at almost all of our trainings, he loves to plug in that this year because of COVID and everything that's going on, there really is no reason why troops and girls should not, should not be participating because we have no competition. There should be no, probably no um, school fundraisers because there's really no school. <laughs> it's all virtual. So um, yeah, so we should have no competition this year. All right, so your chocolate items and nut items are gonna be delivered between October 19th through the 23rd. Make sure you have someone ready on, to be on hand and accept and verify the delivery. Make sure you have a backup plan because things always come up. Remember chocolate melts, <laughs> keep in a cool and a dry place. Remember that you also order to the piece. It's not like cookies where you order by the case. So if a girl only needs three whole cashews, you only order three whole cashews. We do not order extras of any of this. So we need to just order what the girls are ordering. Remember everybody counts. When you get your uh, items from your service unit fall product manager, they should be counting, you should be counting. And also when your parents pick up the reward, the, I'm sorry, not the rewards. Well, yeah, both. Um, the, the nut items, make sure that you are counting and that they are counting as well. And make sure you are having receipts for everything, okay? Receipts, receipts, receipts. So now we're going to talk about our girl online experience. Uh, again, this is called M2, the, the system, and this is these girls, these avatars are called Me Too's. And um, it is a patented... Um, avatar so yeah sorry so this is how you get started so first once the girls get that flyer the girls are going to log in if they participated last year um they can click log in if they forgot their password there is a button that says forgot password if they are registering for the first time they do need to go ahead and register set it up but either way once they log in it is going to ask them to verify their zip code and the reason for that is because it wants to know that the girls are at the right council. It's going to ask the participant information and secure a password. And the best part of this is that this system does not stop your girls from continuing. If the girls or parent does not know their troop number, there is a drop down option that says, I do not see or know my troop or group number. Um, so it allows them to continue. And then it is gonna ask them questions about what her goal is and what does being a Girl Scout mean to them. Once they fill that out, the girls are gonna create their avatar. I was asked, uh, does a, my daughter have to create it again? And I said, yes, because the girls change every year. Maybe she, had, she didn't have glasses last year or maybe she has streaks in her hair or maybe she wants to just change her up. That is okay. We always, because of all these features that they have, there are over 3 billion avatar combinations that can be created with this system. Um, the new features this year is the girls, because we're in COVID, right, can actually w choose to wear a mask on their face. And then, uh, yeah, and sloth slippers. Those are the new options this year. Last year, they could also add their voice. So the reason that was kind of cool, or it is kind of cool, is because the girl can actually record uh, an audio just saying, hey, this is me, Aggie. Uh, it's that time of year again. It's time to uh, buy some fall product or whatever message she wants. And then when the customer opens the email, the I'll show you where um, the girl's avatar's mouth will actually open in that voice or whatever recording that they did. So then after she does that, she's going to personalize her storefront. Then the girl can choose automatically. She is going to have a, an avatar selfie, as you see right here on the screen. But let's say she's like, no, I don't want my avatar selfie. I want my own selfie. I want them to see me. They can also upload their own selfie. And uh, it just, they just tell the system which one they want to default to. And then it has been proven, and I don't know if any of your girls, and normally I get a head shake from those who sold last year, um, that 
for those girls who did upload a video, they 100% of the time met their goal. And the reason that happens is because they, their girls are, were so, they're so proud of, you know, I want everybody, I want the entire world to see my video. So they are more likely to send the video to more friends, more family, and they do reach their goal. Okay, so now she will be promoting her campaign. Once she does that, she can now um, sell on Facebook, on a personal Facebook or on Twitter. Last year when I did this training, 22% uh, tw of sales came from, uh, yeah, it was 22% of sales came from online, from social media. This past year, you all blew it out of the water and it was increased to 27%. I can't even imagine what it's gonna be ne next year when I do this training because we are, you know, everything is virtual nowadays. So it'll be interesting to see how much that rises. As you can see on the left side right there, you can upload um, your, your contacts. But the best part of this is let's say your daughter forgot her, her password, but she did sell. Don't have her create a new one. Make sure she logs in because if she had customers who purchased from her, they will already be listed there. So she's not gonna have to go back and type them or anything. She's just gonna promote her, send them those emails, and it's already gonna list the ones who purchased from her last year. Okay. And then of course, like last year, once a girl starts earning her, once she earns her patch, it is going to be sent directly to the girl. Um, that's why you have to please, please, please make sure that your parents are putting their, their personal um, mailing address because it ships it right to the girl. I was told in Beaufort that some of the girls started receiving them in October. Our sale wasn't even done and they had already received their, their avatar patch. So this is what the girls campaign headquarters looks like. This is where the girl can print her business cards. And that's going to be very important this year with everything going online. You know, of course they can still go door to door, but one of the items, um, you, one of the things you can do is print out that business, those business cards and hand those out instead of too many hands on the order card, right? So it's only one person uh, doing those, uh, the orders on the order card. But what you could do is take pictures of that business card because that has your girl's special unique link take a picture of it, text it, email it, distribute it that way if you'd like. The other thing about this that I love is that the girls will instantly, because the, the, if they're selling online, their, their rewards are already being tracked automatically. The girls will already be able to see what they've earned. They will be able to see right there at a glance where they are on their goal. They'll be able to see who the top sellers in their troop are. If they have more than one girl, um, uh, if a parent has more than one daughter, she does not have to have another email address. That little button that has the girl in the bottom says add girl participant. So the parent can access multiple girls from one email address. And then right there where it says manage paper orders. The parents have the ability to enter their order cards instead of you doing it. At many trainings, most of you all are like, nope, I don't want them to do that. But for those who have done, allowed their parents to do their own order entries, they love it. They have actually, they, they tell them, go ahead and do it. And then they ask them for a copy, like a picture or email of their order card. They never take the order card. They always ask them for a picture of it. And then they just do a double check. And then if they need to make edits, they can, okay? So this is what the avatar's room looks like. As you see, all those icons right there, those are virtual rewards that the girls can earn. So what the girls do is they click on all of those and then they just see what they have to do to earn them. But like I told you last year, the number one reason the girls visit their room is to click on that troop photo because it shows it to them. It shows all the girls in the troop. It shows them their avatar and of course the leaders and it shows them yearbook style. And what I have heard multiple times from people saying is that they love this photo. You can upload that photo. People have made t-shirts from them. People, and you can do whatever you want with these. I think they're so cute. But again, the number one reason the girl went into that to see that photo is because they wanted to see you guys, the leaders. They want to make sure that you all are doing your avatar correctly. 
and then they want to see and they will i don't know if any of you uh got any feedback about your avatars <laughs> if they look like you or not but i know that a lot of our trainings people kept telling us yes they looked they totally looked at those avatars and then this is what your cookie crossover patch looks like this year okay if you have not received your uh, cookie crossover patch from this past year, they are coming. Trust me, they are being missed, uh, shipped this week. They started shipping this week. So they, they are coming. They're not coming to you. Remember, they go right to the girls, okay? And these requirements are the same. The way um, a girl would earn this is for the 2020 fall product, which is the one we're in. The only thing the girl has to do is create her avatar and send 15 emails, that's it. So even if you have a parent or a girl that says, hey, um, I don't want her to sell fall product, you say that's okay, but I still want her to create her avatar and send 15 emails. And the reason we want that is because that checks off the first part to earning this patch. The second part is that for the 2021 cookie program, she must sell 350 packages and then she earns this patch. How easy was that this year? With cookies in hand, it was very, very simple, okay? And so this is the page. Remember I, I told you earlier that um, the avatar's mouth would move? This is where it would happen. So the customer would open this email, Her your girl's avatar would show up, and if she recorded a message, this is where the, 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 her mouth would move. It also uh, tells them right here, there's two links, the magazine and then the nuts and chocolates. If they click on either one, they both look the same. Uh, it's gonna show them the avatar selfie or her actual selfie, whichever one the girls defaulted to. It's gonna show the customer where she is at her goal. And it's gonna show her a video. If her daughter, if your daughters or your girls did do upload a video, this is where it would show. If they did not do a video, that is okay. There is already a default video there ready to go. So you wouldn't even have to worry about it. And then the customers will see two shipping options up until October 4th. They will see girl delivery or direct ship. Girl delivery is pretty much like emailing your order card to a customer. The customer will only be able to see the 16 items or will only be able to purchase those 16 items that are on the order card for the girl to, be, to deliver it. Best part about both of these is that the system collects the money. You do not have to do anything. The system already does an order for those, those orders that your customer did. If the customer does select the direct ship, that is where the customer will have to pay for shipping. Um, but it comes directly to the customer and that's where the, item, the, the customer will be able to see all those 25 items that I told you about earlier. So as I mentioned, if you do allow your parents to enter their order cards, it is that simple. I showed you that little tab, they would click on that tab and they would be from A through Q. The way it is listed on your order card, A through Q, that is how the, the parent would enter the order, okay? Parent will be able to see all the reports, all her online magazines, her online nuts, paper sales, everything that uh, pertains to her daughter, she will be able to see it. Now let's talk about our volunteer access, right? Because I want a patch too. I mean, who doesn't want a patch? So as I mentioned, um, the way you are going to get access to the system is by filling out that form and then I tell him to these uh, troops are the ones that are I have will have access. On September 4th, the day the sale starts, you will receive this email invitation from M2. You click on that link and then it takes you to their landing page. If you participated last year and you remember your password, you just go ahead and log in. If you do not remember your password, again, you do have that forgot password option. And if you are new, you're going to um, create that for the first time. I have a couple of questions okay. that I've answered, but just for you to touch base with it says, um, how do, if I'm a leader but don't have a girl in the troop, how do I make an avatar? Or if a troop has more than one leader, can they all make an avatar? Okay, the first one was I'm a leader, but I don't have a girl. Right. So that's okay. To turn in the yeah, that is okay. You just uh, turn in that form. You you select that invitation um, link, and then you create your avatar. And in fact, I'll show you where in a bit. Super cute. That's what I yes, and the other one is if you have multiple 
unfortunately, only two people can earn that. Um, and I would select the people who are running the program. But that's just me. If you all want to rock, paper, scissors it, I mean, that's cool too. <laughs> if you want to draw straws, whatever works for you, that's unfortunately, it's only two. So, um, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So either way, once you log in, um, it is going to, just like last year, uh, have you see a six to eight minute video that you cannot bypass. I'm sorry. It's been a year. We forgot, right? We just need to get back in the group. So um, we need to watch it. And then after you watch it, it'll go away. It'll be stored and I'll show you where it'll be stored in a bit. And then um, if you wanted to go back to it, you could go back to it. But for the first time, you do have to watch that video. So one of the things we're gonna do different this year, in fact, I just asked Michaela Watts for help on this because they've already asked me for this um, form, is the council is actually gonna upload all your girls into the system. But what I love about this is that, let's say, for example, uh, Kyle, one of your girls is not there. That's, that's for one reason and one reason only, she's not registered. <laughs> so she has to be registered, okay? So my first thing would be, or she just hasn't been processed yet. But either way, I would look and see, why is she not on there? I need to make sure she's registered. And then the second thing you do is you add her yourself. It's not like cookies where you have to send me an email and say, hey, I need you to add all these girls, okay? Uh, so you will have access to add girls and delete them. So if there's girls that are no longer in your troop, you can absolutely delete them as well. This is the troops campaign headquarters. So remember I told you you're gonna create your avatar. You see right here on top where it says edit me too. That is where you guys are going to create and edit your, um, your me too, your personal avatar. Then this is where you can view your troop photo. Remember I told you a lot of people like upload it and make t-shirts from it. That is where you would do that. So what I love about this too, right there, as soon as you log in, you guys are gonna be able to see how many avatars have been created in your troop, how many emails have been sent out, how many photos have been uploaded, and how many videos. For those of you who sold last year, right there, those tabs that say $153 on your screen, it'll say 2019 and then 2020. It's gonna, on a daily basis, compare your sale from day to day. So for each of those items, for their, your entire sale, your online magazine, your direct ship, all of those tasks is gonna give you information on last year and then where you are this year. You guys can also email your parents. Right here, it says send messages. Uh, remember that default video? Okay, so that, tr that storefront default video, if you wanna view it, it's right here. If you want to see that training video that you cannot bypass the first time and you're like, oh my gosh, what did it say? You can click on there right there. You'll see it. Um, you'll see your paper order entry right there, that tab. You just click on it and you enter your orders. Rewards, same thing right here. You click on that tab and you make selections if you need to. And the number one uh, thing you're going to want to look at is because this year I'm not going to send you guys how much you owe the council. It is so simple. All you do is click that report right there that says troop summary amount due report. That is gonna give you a breakdown of everything. And at the bottom, it's gonna say balance due to council, okay? So unless you email me discrepancy reports, that is the amount that we are going to ACH from your troop on November 20th, okay? So as I mentioned, if you clicked on that tab, this is where you guys can send emails to your girls, your parents. And I don't know, I don't think I saw any service unit people, maybe one, I think Ciara was on there. Yeah, um, but you all can also do that as well. Uh, you would just click on that or you can send emails to your parents, okay? And then as I mentioned, once you, it's, re it's time for you to do your order card, you would click on that tab that I showed you that says paper order entry. You click on it and then you select the girl's name and from A through Q, you just enter those uh, items and you're good to go. Same with the rewards. You click on that rewards tab, you select the girl and you make op uh, you choose the options if there are any to be made. And as I mentioned, true banking, everything is there. It is right there for you broken down. And then there is an option for you to enter girl payments. 
I don't enter those for you because I don't know what the parents are going to give you. So that information is as good as the information you put in there. That is for you all to be entered. Okay. And again, as we re remember, there's reports for everything. There's reports for a breakdown of each of those items. Um, I mean, to specific details of the individual girls. That is how detailed you can get reports on the system. And for US service units here, I think there's this one would be for you. It looks exactly the same as a troop one. You have the same accessibility, except you get to view the entire troop, uh, all the troops in your service unit, except for, um, yeah, not just your troop. And then the really cool part that I love, and I'm sure you guys utilized these last year, is these delivery tickets. There is a, you can create tickets, and what that means, that is your receipt. So once it's ready for you all, what I would do, when, when my service unit product manager calls me and says, hey, your order is ready to be picked up, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I would print the troop one out. So that way I am, my numbers are exactly the, the same as a service unit fall product manager and you're prepared and ready to pick those items up. And when those parents are ready to pick up, when you're ready for them to pick up from you, you print one for each of your girls. I would print two. So they can have their copy, you have your copy, you sign, they sign both of them. And then the best part of it is if you see at the bottom, it actually summarizes everything. And that's the receipt. That's the receipt stating how much they owe you. Okay, so all of it is on one ticket. And if you're true, and one co-leader, as we mentioned, I'm sorry, it's only two per troop. Um, if your troop sold $750 or more in fall product, um, you all would also get your own avatar patch. And for service unit uh, fall product managers, if your entire service unit sold $1, you get your patch too. So. All right, so after you're done um, watching this, because I think we're almost done, <laughs> you all are gonna go back to your, troop, to your troop and your parents and have a meeting, whether it's in person, virtually, however you wanna do it. Make sure you discuss with them the paperwork. Have them sign those parent permission forms. Let them know the important dates. Make sure you tell them about their e the emails, the do's and don'ts on social media, parent order entry, where the, to do it if you allow them to. Encourage them to watch this Zoom recording. As I mentioned, we are recording it. Um, um, the reason I mentioned this is because a lot of times parents don't understand why you're asking them for these deadlines or why you need them to sign this. I want parents to know that what you all are doing is a lot. You all do a lot on top of being a mom. I see some of you cooking in the background with your daughter right next to you. I mean, you all are not just doing that, Kara. <laughs> and that's awesome because that's what you do. That's you're not just a Girl Scout leader, you're a mom, you work, you, you were tired of Zoom. So let them know. I just want your parents to know that you all do a lot and we appreciate everything you all do. With your girls, make sure you discuss the five skills, uh, the money handling procedures. Let them know about the fall product. Make sure they set their goals. And again, please encourage them to create their Me Too because even if they don't sell, at least they create it, send 15 emails, and it, you know, one part of it is done for that cookie crossover. And Diane did mention already that the girls will be receiving a postcard in the mail, um, encouraging them to sell for product and to come back to Girl Scouts. So as Diane mentioned, you all are the best at protecting your girls. So make sure you all are still following BHEC, Accelerate South Carolina, and CDC guidelines. Uh, this was a suggestion to make copies of the nut items, as I mentioned before. We don't want too many people handling that order card. Um, but if you don't want to or can't or don't have a, a, um, a printer, that's okay. You can laminate it. Or even at Target, they sell these really cool in the dollar section. You know, when you first go in with Target, um, they have these, these pouches where you can just insert the order card. So, I mean, you could always hand them that order card. And then after they tell you what they want, the girl will take it out, make sure the girls are sanitizing and uh, cleaning that. Um, have them carry hand wipes, hand sanitizer wipes, have them wear their masks, wear gloves when selling the customers or, or the parent and girl should be the only one to write. And then um, our product sales committee will be meeting uh, very, very soon in the next two weeks to present some some guidelines 
for distribution of nut items and rewards, okay? And then once those um, guidelines have been done and created by your, by your product sales committee, your service unit fall product manager will call you and let you know of those items. So, uh, as I mentioned, the program does start September 4th. So the girls cannot sell one item. They should not be selling anything until September 4th. And that order card runs till October 4th. As well as that option I mentioned earlier, the girl delivery option that was online, that ends as well on October 4th. That is also the deadline for your parents to enter paper order entries if they want to, if you allow them to. And then for you all as troops, you all have until October 6th to make, um, do your orders or make any edits. And service units have until October 8th. As I mentioned, uh, service units are delivered October 19th through the 23rd, and the girls can still continue to sell online even after they turn in that order card to you through October 25th. But remember, the customer will only see the uh, direct ship option. And, um, and the girls still get rewards and credit for those as well. And as I mentioned, uh, the ACH is November 20th. That is when the council will go ahead and take the balance due um, from your bank account. The other thing I have for you is, uh, this is M2's customer care number. This is also on your troop envelope. Uh, M2 loves their system, guys. They have put in so much time, work, money into their system. They wanna make this as seamless and easy as possible. And for those of you who, uh, I asked you earlier if you sold a fall product last year, I told you, was it easy? And I got a lot of thumbs up because it is that easy. Um, but also, I also mentioned that now every council has M2. So what the reason I bring this up is because let's say it glitches or you're having an issue, make sure you call them or email them because that, the, the same thing could be happening to a troop leader in California. And um, <laughs> trust me when I say, if they have like common questions and issues asked, they are going to correct it, okay? And then I want to just thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being on this webinar. That is it. Um, I appreciate all that you do. Again, please let Deborah know if you want me to take your, um, your fall packet, your fall product packet to you to any of those, I'm going to put them back. I'm going to put that screen back because that way you know which day. The drive through Right here. Sorry. And it's on our Facebook. Well. It is on our Facebook as well. All right. So now I know that Diane has been answering a lot of questions. Is there anything, Diane, that was commonly asked? Or if you all have a question, or just want to say, hey, you all did great. You can Kyle mute yourself. One question. Oh, okay. But uh, it says, what okay. about girls who are registered but not participating in fall product sales? I think the question was around how do they get the crossover patch, but I'm not sure. Is that what you were looking for, Kyle? If they're not selling fall product, but they still want to earn the crossover patch? No, I just like we have some girls who hold on. I can't hear you. I'm sorry, Kyle. Let me let me turn my volume up. Oh, oh my God. We have some girls who are One only second, let me find my volume. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yours is up. Okay, so go ahead. go ahead. Okay, we have some girls who only participate. Kyle, we're not hearing you though. Yeah, I still can't. Yeah, I still can't hear you. It looks okay. like you're not you're muted, not but we're not. You're, you're not, not coming through. through. Uh, I was earlier. You could use the chat. I think your clarification was if your girls don't sell fall product, that's fine. But if they wanted to earn the crossover patch, they don't have to sell any fall product, but they need to sign up, create their avatar, and send 15 emails Correct. to be okay. eligible for getting the crossover patch. Was that the question, Kyle? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Kind of. Put it on the chat. We can't hear you for some odd reason, and and we see that you're muted. You. Yeah. You can always send Deborah yeah. an email. You can always for me or Aggie. <laughs> or Aggie. Okay, <laughs> we can get back to you. Okay. Okay. She says that's good. She'll she'll okay. follow up. 
All right. Any, Any other questions? questions? Oh, thank you, Caitlin. This is why we did this. This is why we did this. Stay safe. Stay safe. I have a question. Can you hear me? Um, when do we need to know about the show? We need to know? So we'll be in Myrtle David. Beach. So we'll be in Myrtle Beach. I did unmute it. So as soon as you know your, your shop order, send it to Shandella, and then we will put that in the chat. Perfect. I put Shandella's email in the chat, and I'm saying to give us two days lead time because we'll have to probably transfer and get it there. So we'll be in Myrtle Beach Wednesday. So if you could email Shandella by Monday, that that should work. We should be able to figure out how to get it. Tammy, I think you're trying to talk, but same thing. I see that you're muted and I cannot hear you. That's yeah. That, that is Can you unmute all participants? all participants? Let's see. Let me check this. And just see what's going on. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Because I don't see a mute yeah, sign, but we're not hearing. But we're not hearing. I don't, I don't even see a, uh, let's see, under, under participants. participants. I can hear on this end. Unmute all. Oh. So, okay, I've unmuted everyone, but there's still mute signs. Okay, can you hear me now? Some people are off. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can hear Tammy. <sighs> My question is: Is can another can leader? Hear someone, even, Kyle. <laughs> even though I can't hear, hear anyone. anyone. Even though they don't wow. do well, the training, I say and they email us yeah. with questions. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and email us. Email yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and email us your questions. Chat. I do apologize. Tammy, can you put it um, in the chat? chat? Tammy, can you put it in the chat? Yeah, if I can figure it out. How do I put it in the chat? Cut this. That's not it. Tammy, what, so what was your question? I wanted to know is, okay, I'm the only one in my troop as a leader was doing the training, the virtual training. Can one of the other leaders pick up the fall sale packets? She said that she's there in go. the training, but her other leader is not in the training, but could she pick up the fall packet? Okay. okay. I I can hear you now, so repeat the question. Okay, I'm doing the, the fall training, the fall sale training, but can one of my other leaders pick up the packets? Yes. Okay. Okay, so they'll pick it up when they come through. Um, I think that's Thursday, y'all are coming, they're doing the drive-through in North Austin? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Any other questions? No, that's it. Cool. You need us to notify you before we come pick up our packet at the time that is scheduled? Huh. Can we make it? Just we let Deborah know that you're coming so she has your packet ready. ready. And then, um, no, I don't need to know what time. Once you drive up, I will ask you for your trip number and then I will hand you your packet. Okay, so just send Deborah an email? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We get this uh, slide, so we like our meetings are virtual right now. So this these slides would be helpful to share with our parents. Are you going to share them to us, or have you already? So, yes, ma'am. The PowerPoint is already on our website. The recording, uh, as soon as I'm done, it'll probably be there tomorrow, which okay. is what we're doing now. But the PowerPoint with only the slides, I'm not talking. That's already on our website. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? You're welcome. Any other questions? It was that easy, right? Thumbs up? That easy? Awesome. <laughs> the sloth says it's easy. Kara, we're good? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we should. All right, so that is going to end our training. I don't see any other questions, but again, if you do have other questions, please call Deborah, email her, or Diane, or myself, 
and uh, we will be more than happy to help you. And thank you again so much for uh, being on this recording. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Bye.